Hello, my name is Lisa Great, the president and founder of the Apostolic Resource Center. I'm here today to do another video blog with you as a word of encouragement, hopefully to give you some understanding and insight maybe to some of what you've been going through and why you've been going through it. One of the things that happens in the body of Christ is that it says that through many trials and tribulations, we are going to enter the kingdom of God. The challenge is, is that we do not like trials, nor do we like tribulations. And so when we go through hard times, we find it difficult to understand what is this all for. As I was in prayer this morning, the Lord began to speak to me about the fourth man in the fire. And he began to show me what I believe are the three men that were in the fire. And he said, don't forget there's a fourth man in the fire. Now, I wasn't in prayer about anything that I was concerned about or any uh, deep-seated concerns about any issues in my own life. But as I began to pray, I sensed that there's a lot of us, and, and I'm going to include myself in this because I don't know that where I was fully aware of the reality of the battles that are surrounding us. You know, the song that has really been in my spirit all week long is the one by Michael W. Smith called Surrounded. And it says, when I'm surrounded, um, when I'm surrounded, I know I'm surrounded. It may, I'm sorry, let me say it this way. The lyrics to the song go, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. And many of us are surrounded by many things, but I want to remind you that you are surrounded by him. And that was kind of the context with which this idea of there's a fourth man in the fire came out of. And so I want to share something with you out of Daniel chapter 3 as a word of encouragement for you today, because every one of us has battles that we're facing, but I believe they can be put into one of three categories. And you can correct me if I'm wrong. Please put your post notes in the uh, comments below. But I, have, I believe that three categories describe every battle that every person goes through. And I believe they're found in Daniel chapter 3. So in the story of Daniel chapter 3, we, we see that King Nebuchadnezzar, this pagan king, had erected a gold statue based on a dream he had that, that Daniel, the righteous Jew that was living in Babylon, had interpreted based on a dream he had. And out of this dream, he created this gold statue. This was a huge statue, and he called all of his leaders of his country to come in and to bow down to this statue every time they heard the sound of certain instruments playing. Well, there was three boys, uh, well, men, I don't want to call them boys, they were men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men refused to bow down, and they were known as Jews, and, and the Babylonians, and the Persians, and the Chaldeans, and all of these other foreign allies um, of the king knew that these Jews were not obeying the orders of the king. And so they basically reported these boys to the king, these men to the king. And the king said, hey, if you don't bow down, I'm going to give you two choices. You either bow or you go in the fiery furnace. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, not going to bow. Sorry. With all due respect, king, we will do whatever you ask of us, but we will not bow down to a golden statue that you are asking us to bow down to. So can't do it. We will not worship any other God but Yahweh, and so we cannot bow down to another God. That was their conviction. That's what they stood on, and they were not going to change their mind. You know the story out of Daniel chapter 3. They get thrown into the fiery furnace. It says that he heated it up seven times hotter. That just means that he put it at the highest level of heat that he could get it to, threw these three boys in, and the Bible says that they fell down in the fire. They fell down in it. And even though they were tied up, and that word means they were bound, okay? Remember, whatever you bind on earth. So they were bound and thrown into this fire. Uh, while they were in the fire, though, the Bible says in Daniel chapter 3 that there was a fourth man in the fire. But the Bible says that Kim Nebuchadnezzar is the one that noticed the fourth man in the fire. <clears throat> and, and he was the one that noticed it, and he said that, let me read it to you right here, it's in verse 19 of chapter 3, then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury and his facial expression changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and he threw them in the fire. And then it says in verse 21, he said, then these three men were bound in their cloaks, their tunics or undergarments, their turbans and their other clothing, and they were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace was exceedingly hot, the flame and sparks from the fire killed the men who handed them over. So we knew it was really hot. But then it says, Then Nebuchadnezzar the king saw and was astonished, and he jumped up and said to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? 
They answered, true, O king. Yes, we did. And then the king said, behold, I see four men loosed walking in the midst of the fire and they are not hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the son of the gods. Nebuchadnezzar didn't have an understanding of Yahweh. All he understood was the Babylonian gods, the Chaldean gods, the Mesopotamian gods, which were connected to the Egyptian gods. And he says, this looks like a son of the gods that is saving them. Not only are they walking around in the fire, there's four of them walking around and they're loosed. They've been loosed from the bondage that I had put them in. And so what happens is, is the Lord began to have me continue reading in this chapter. And he said to me, don't forget the fourth man in the fire. Well, here's the deal. Only one man in the fire is the son of man. And we know, according to Hebrews 12, 28, that our God is a consuming fire, which means he cannot be burned because he is a fire. He is a flame. So he cannot smell like smoke. He cannot be burned. Therefore, when we get thrown into the fiery furnaces like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did, we've got to recognize that there's a fourth man in the fire with us. And this man, if we hide in him, if we dwell in him, if we walk in him, if we take refuge in him, we cannot be burned. But what are the three men that are representative in our life? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That was the name, the Chaldean names that were given to the three men that were in the fire. But if you keep reading, it says there were three things that, that did not burn on these three men. What were those three things? Verse 27, and all the leaders gathered around together and saw these men that the fire had no power, no power over what? Their bodies. It says they had no power upon their bodies. No, was the head of the hair excuse me, nor was the hair of their head singed, neither were their garments scorched, changed in colors, condition or condition, nor had they even the smell of smoke. That means there was three things that, that did not burn. Their bodies didn't burn, their hair didn't singe, and their cloaks or their trousers in the New American Standards, it says, was not burned. And to top it all off, they came out not smelling like smoke. Well, the Lord began to reveal to me this morning, and I, I can't prove it to you biblically, but I really believe based on looking at people's lives, these three things that were thrown in the fire that could not be burned as long as they were dwelling in the midst of the fourth man in the fire, which we know is the son of man. These three things are number one, their bodies. The Bible says that the two shall become one flesh one body. I believe one of the things that has been thrown in the fire in your life and in my life has been marriage. Our marriages have to go, have been thrown into the fire. Culture hates marriage. The enemy hates marriage because when the two become one, the two are greater than the one. And so the first thing to get thrown in the fire is your marriage. It says that their bodies were not, there was no power. The fire had no power over their bodies. The demonic fires that are raging against your marriage, they have no power as long as you dwell in the midst of the fourth man. As long as you hide your life, your, send your marriage into the midst of the fourth man. Know there's a fourth man in the fire as your marriages go through fire. I do a lot of marriage counseling with a lot of different people. And marriages go through fire all the time. And I want you to know that the Bible says that your marriage has the power to sustain the fire. Your body cannot be burned. Your marriage cannot be burned by the fire as you dwell in the midst. And remember, there's a fourth man in the fire. Now, your marriage is going to be refined. And it's going to be defined by the fire. But it is not going to come out smelling like smoke as long as you hide your marriage in the fourth man in the fire. The second thing, it says not, nor was the hair of their head singed. The head represents your mind, the way you think. It represents your intelligence. It represents um, <clears throat> your thought processes. Now, what I sensed is, is that one of the other ways that people struggle is in their finances, the way they think about money, the way they process money, what they do with their money. You say, how can you connect the mind to money? Because the Bible says uh, the mind is the mind, will, and emotions. And then 3 John 2 says, even as may you prosper, even as your soul prospers. 
and and we know that the way a man thinks in his heart so he is and a lot of people battle with money they're in pursuit of marriage they're in pursuit of money and your money has gone through the fire many people's money has gone through the fire they call me and ask for financial advice they want to know how to stay out of debt how to live without debt we well, got to change the way you think you got to change the way you think about money if you want to live a prosperous life they have um, I think there's a famous book out called by uh, Napoleon uh, Napoleon yeah called think and grow rich and so you've got to realize that your thinking is connected to your finances and many people's finances have gone through the fire many many different times and in many different ways but I want you to know that even in your giving what is what is giving it's a thought mentality some people are generous some people are stingy some people are at the letter of the law some people are at the spirit of the law some people only give 10% some people don't even give 10% some people give more than 10% so the reality is is that the way you think determines what you do with your money some people think that what is valuable is material things other people think other things are, are valuable when I lived in Malaysia we would have people that lived in a lower income condo but they drove a high income car it's because of the way people think some people want to display their wealth externally for others to see some people want to display their wealth internally in the sense of where they live whether people can see it or not and so the way you think determines how you deal with your money so I believe the second thing that was thrown in the fire and I believe that this is the second of three things that every person struggles with marriage money and here's the third thing that was thrown into fire it says neither were their garments scorched changed in color or condition the garments in that passage means their mantle mantle always represents your ministry your ministry your calling what it is that you have been called to do it does ministry does not mean you have to work in a church it can mean that but it doesn't have to mean that it can mean your marketplace ministry it can be mean your ministry as a mother or as a father it can mean your ministry as a as a parent it can mean your ministry in the ministry as a Levite or as a uh, uh, as a minister in the in the temple uh, as many would say pastors apostles prophets evangelists teachers um, uh, musicians intercessors you name it I believe these are the three things that go through the fire that the enemy throws in the fire when you refuse to bow to him now many people have bowed their marriage to the enemy and it's affected their marriage many people have bowed their their money to the enemy and it's affected their money many people have bowed their ministry or their calling to the enemy and it's affected them but when you stand up to the enemy in your marriage in your money and in your ministry he will throw you into the fire and I want to let you know take the stand anyway Ephesians 6 says stand and keep on standing I want you to take the stand anyway and say no I will not compromise my marriage I will remain faithful in this covenant that I made to this person yes it's hard yes it's hurt but I'm gonna let the Lord refine me so that I can be a more effective wife or a more effective husband in my marriage don't be afraid to go into the fire even if you are bound right now there's ties in your marriage there's things in your marriage that you feel stuck you feel strangled you feel you feel like you don't have anything that you can um, get loose of it's okay the enemy's gonna throw you in the fire and guess what the fire is gonna remove the remove the bonds and the fourth man in the fire is gonna loose you and set you free but you've got to hide in the fourth man in the fire and and if you're not married guess what you're bound in wanting to be married people are either married and they're pursuing the frustrations in marriage or they're wanting to be married marriage is something that has to go through the fire it's one of the three main things that everybody wants or deals with the second thing is is your money your money is bound if you bow a knee to the enemy and go into debt and go into all these financial challenges in order to, to um to get what you want now because you haven't gone through the financial fire guess what you need to go through the financial fire the reason why is because the bindings that are on your arms the, the 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 shackles that are on your wrist they will be burned off in the fire and the fourth man in the fire will teach you how to do marriage he will teach you how to do finances and the third thing is is your calling your ministry I have found more people that pursue marriage money or ministry but they do not pursue the man if you do not pursue the man but rather you 
pursue one of these three things that are going to go through the fire, marriage, ministry, or money, I will guarantee you, you will not see the fourth man in the fire. You have got to fix your eyes on the man. If your eyes are on marriage, if your eyes are on money, or if your eyes are on ministry of any sort, you are going to miss what the kingdom of God is trying to do in and through your life. Because the fourth man in the fire is the only answer for you coming out of this fire with your bonds broken, you're completely loose, and you're not even having a smell of smoke on you, which means you won't even smell like what you have been through. But you've got to fix your eyes on the man, the fourth man in the fire. If you don't, if your eyes are on ministry, if your eyes are on marriage, or if your eyes are on money, you will come out smelling like smoke. And we have enough people that are talking Enough people that are counseling, enough people that are preaching and speaking, that are writing books that smell like smoke. That's why the anger, that's why the venomous words, that's why the media, that's why the messages, that's why the ministries, they smell like smoke because their eyes are on ministry, their eyes are on a, a, a marriage, or the eyes are on money. And these three things will cause you to smell like smoke. The only way to come out of the fire without smelling like smoke is to fix your eyes on that man. So can I encourage you today? Stop pursuing marriage. Stop pursuing marriage. Even if you're in a marriage, stop pursuing your marriage. Pursue the man Jesus and your marriage will come out not smelling like smoke. Stop pursuing money. Money will not be able to save you. Stop pursuing money. Pursue the man, Jesus the Christ, and your money will come out and it won't even smell like smoke. And stop pursuing ministry. Stop putting all your time, energy, effort, and everything into trying to get in the ministry. Pastors are exhausted by people trying to pursue ministry. And then if they don't get what they want, they leave the church out of anger and go find a church that will let them pursue ministry. Facebook has turned everybody into a minister. Everybody's pursuing ministry. Pursue the man, Jesus Christ. It's okay to sit in your church and have nobody know your name, know your gift, know how anointed you are. It's okay. If you pursue the man, you will come out of all three of these things not smelling like smoke. And when you come out, you will be able to influence the influential. Because guess what happens when they came out and they didn't smell like smoke? It says that Nebuchadnezzar said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered her, his servants who believed in him, trusted in him. And relied on him. And they set aside the king's command and yielded their bodies rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore, this is the best part, 329, Daniel 329. I, Nebuchadnezzar, make a decree that any people, nation, and language that speaks anything amiss against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces and their houses be made a dunghill. For there is no other God who can deliver in this way. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. If a, if a Babylonian king can see Yahweh as God through these three men that refuse to, to, to cling to their marriage, to cling to their money, and to cling to their ministry, but rather sacrificed it in the fire and fixed their eyes upon the fourth man, how much more you and I? I believe the answer to the problems in the earth today are for the church, the body of believers, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the head of the church. If we would fix our eyes upon the man, I don't care if you're in a titled position in companies or in churches. I don't care if you're a lay person or an employee in a company or in a church. I am here to tell you today, if you will allow the, the Lord to, to be the fourth man in the fire in your marriage, your ministry, and your money, you will come out stop smelling like smoke. But you have to fix your eyes on the fourth man in the fire. You've got to fix your eyes on him. Dwell in the midst of the fourth man in the fire. Fix your gaze. Don't turn. Don't look at marriage, ministry, or money. Marriage comes. Marriage goes. Money comes. Money goes. Ministry comes. Money goes. But that man... That man, Jesus the Christ, the son of the living God, he will never leave you or forsake you. And if you would fix your eyes on him, I promise you that you will be promoted. 
in the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. He will remember you. He will promote you. He will allow you to influence the influential. But this is not a slow or easy process. It doesn't say when Nebuchadnezzar noticed the fourth man in the fire. It doesn't say how long these guys had to live in the fire. But I am here to tell you, marriages go through fire. Ministry goes through fire. And money goes through fire. And if you can allow the fire to remove the shackles off of those three things in your life, you're going to come out not smelling like smoke as long as your eyes are upon the man, the fourth man in the fire. I hope you're encouraged by this word today. I wanted it to be a blessing to you. I wanted it to be practical to you because I've watched people, Christians especially, I've watched them pursue marriage, money, and ministry. But we as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ are to pursue the man. The reason we got saved is because we came face to face with a man named Jesus Christ who died on a cross to forgive us of our sins. And the challenge is we need to keep our eyes fixed on that man even as we advance into the kingdom of God in realms and dimensions that we never knew were possible. Always anchor your soul into the man. Lock your eyes upon the man. And whether ministry is given or not given, whether money is um, increased or decreased, whether your marriage um, happens the way you think it should or doesn't happen the way you want it to, Nonetheless, as long as your eyes are upon the man and you and the man Jesus Christ operate um, according to his will and in his way and you walk with him and talk with him and let him change you, all these other things, all these other things, they will come out and they won't smell like smoke. It takes time though. It takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen in a week or a month. It takes time. But if you can remember the old song, I'm coming back to the heart of worship because it's all about you. It's all about you. So when the music fades and all is stripped away, don't forget there's a fourth man in the fire and he'll bring you out in ways you never thought possible and he'll promote you and you won't even smell like smoke. Be blessed. May the Lord bless you. Have a great day. This is Lisa Great with the Apostolic Resource Center.